Hi, Scott Israel here with First Vision to talk about Teledyne DOS's TurboDrive technology. Now there's been a lot of detailed information on TurboDrive that you could find on either our website or on the Teledyne DOSA website, but today I wanted to give a very quick high-level explanation of it and why you should consider a camera with TurboDrive technology. What exactly is TurboDrive? It's a patent-pending lossless encoding technology from Teledyne DALSA that allows you to effectively increase your bandwidth over the transport medium. It's independent of transport medium, so whether or not you have gigabit Ethernet or USB 3 cameras or whatever with TurboDrive, this would work. By having an encoder and uh, memory on the camera, it allows data to come in at a faster rate than, let's say, gigabit Ethernet, where it is encoded so there is less data to transmit over the transport medium. Decoding is then done on the host. As we'll show, it potentially allows real-world speedup of data transfer from about 25 to 250 percent over the standard data rates. As an example, GIGI is normally 125 megabyte per second, but now you can effectively get 150 to up to 300 megabytes per second of effective data transfer. So if you had a one megapixel sensor that was running at 125 frames per second over GIGI, -E, now on the same GIGI -E, you can get potentially up to 350 frames per second. Why you should consider turbo drive cameras? If you don't want to listen to the rest of this presentation, it comes down to these two bullets. DALSA's cameras with TurboDrive technology give the possibility of going 25 to 250 percent faster than cameras without it, but DALSA's cameras are priced about the same as cameras without TurboDrive. So really, why wouldn't you want to consider a TurboDrive camera? How does TurboDrive work? It uses something called entropy encoding. This is lossless encoding. As we shall see later on in the presentation, speedup results are data dependent. The encoder is in the camera, the decoder is in the computer. Sapera software gives you the option to turn encoding on or off. Here's a picture of Cam Expert, and there's a little drop down menu that enables you to turn it on or off. It's that simple. If you have it turned off, you get the regular gigabit Ethernet bandwidth. If you turn it on, you potentially get faster speed. Any downsides to this? Well, the computer's doing the decoding. So if you're using a very lightweight processor, it might use up lots of the CPU. If you have a quad-core i7, you might not notice anything going on at all. Let's take a very simple example of encoding. So DALSA uses something called entropy encoding. They can uh, discuss that in great detail in their white papers. Let's talk about run length encoding, which is a very simple encoding technique. With run length encoding, what you do is you transfer just the length of the number of the same pieces of data, and then how far it is with the data that you have. So that was a lot of words. It's easier to see. In this example below, we have a 256 by 256 image. It's a total of 64 kilobytes. And you can see that in the image, everything except the middle pixel here is zero. So row one is all zeros, row up to 128 is all zeros. In that middle row, everything's a zero but the middle number. And then continuing on, everything after that is zero. So with run length encoding, we don't transmit the data, which would be 64 kilobytes. We transmit how many of the same values and that value. Row 1 is all zeros. So instead of transmitting 0 256 times, which would be 256 bytes of data, we transmit just two bytes. We transmit the value 0 of what the pixel value is and the value 256, how many times in a row it happens. So that's just two bytes of data, not 256. For that row, we've reduced the data that we have to transmit by a factor of 128. The middle row has a 256 in the middle. So there we would transmit 127 zeros, 
we would transmit one with 256 and then 128 more zeros. So that's a total here of the first segment up until the middle pixel. That's two bytes, two more bytes for the middle pixel, and then the last set. So it's a total of six bytes for this entire image, uh, for, for the entire row. So you can see in this example, you transmit very little data. You have 255 rows that you just have to transmit two bytes for, and one row that you transmit six bytes, and that's a total of 516 bytes versus the 64K. That's an improvement of 120 times. So as you can see, in this situation, your compression ratio is very data dependent. And in fact, the worst case image is that if every pixel is different, you would now transmit more data with the encoding technique than you would if you transmitted just um, the picture itself. So if each pixel changed and there was no commonality, you would transmit the number one for the number of times it happens and the value, then the number again for the next pixel on and on. On the other hand, with the example I gave, we saw a, tr a tremendous compression ratio. So what can we really expect? DALSA took maybe 100 images from real-world automated imaging applications. And then they tested the turbo drive model versus the theoretical model. And what you could see is a big cluster of data roughly getting a speed up of between 25 and say 75%. And then there's another cluster of data roughly giving you a speed up of between two and a quarter times. And then finally we have some outliers at three and even getting to three and a half. So you can see that typically what we're gonna get is something on the order of 25 to 75% speed up most of the time with real world uh, automated imaging applications. What we can draw from this is TurboDrive does get, in fact give you the uh, real-world imaging speed-ups, what you'd get over your standard interface, with cameras that cost no more than the competitors' models. If you want more information, of course, go to the website. You can read the detailed explanations or certainly give us a call at the numbers below, and we'd be more than happy to discuss your application. Thanks for taking the time to listen.